And yay! yay! I haven't seen you in a while. I know it's been a while. Where you been hiding? Everywhere I can. <laughs> well, you just moved out to Word Act, what you told me before. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I guess I should look out there <laughs> for trying to find you. But uh, nonetheless, uh, we always get with our extension, usually the fourth Wednesday of the month. Mm -hmm. Talk about some different things going on. We know there's a big event coming up in July locally, and we do know that. There's a lot of other little things that are going on that we just need to go ahead and keep people reminded of. One of them actually is coming up this Friday. It's going to be here before we know it, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, it is um, where they can learn about the warm season grasses to help improve grazing and wildlife systems. Um, it's a workshop that's going to be offered by the University of Missouri Extension. It's an in-person workshop. Yay. Yeah. So um, good to have those yes back. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I, I tend to kind of <laughs> get busy with other things when we're on Zoom and not giving it my full attention. So yeah. I need I need. And then somebody asks you a question about it, you're like, uh, uh. Can you repeat what you just talked about the past five minutes? Because I was, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's good that we're getting back in person with a lot of our meetings at Extension, and, and so I'm getting to meet everybody finally. Right. And but these kind of workshops, though, farmers and, and the, the people who attend, they get as much information from each other as they do the instruction. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's going to be this coming Friday um, from 8 until 1 at the Davisville American Legion Hall. Um, 194 State Route V in southeastern Crawford County. And like you said, a lot of times these workshops, um, the farmers bring, have as much to bring to the table mm -hmm. as the extension employees do. Sure. So it's, it's a good opportunity for them to learn from different aspects and different people and get new ideas. And this is working for me and this is not working for me because we don't want to be making the same mistake. Why? So if somebody's tried it and it's not working, then let's try something else. And we're all in this together. Yes. You know, and so it's not yes. like we're competing with each other for the same ground. It's not. Your ground may have this or may have that. Uh, we all know when uh, Eric was here and I talked to Gatlin the, the other time on the phone about how important soil testing is. You know, Absolutely. I think people forget. You know, they think, well, it's grass. Well, it's, it's grass, you're right, but it, it's a warm season grass. It's a cool season grass. Mm -hmm. It has grass that maybe doesn't have much nutrient value to it whatsoever because it's growing on soil that doesn't have anything left in it except the bare minimums to allow grass to grow. Right. And so right. your livestock out there is not getting the nutrients they want. They're not adding the weight that they should. And next thing you know, you're trying to figure out, what am I doing? I have to go buy hay to feed and all of a sudden the expenses keep rolling up when maybe just maybe a, just a couple of soil tests might there tell you that you might need to treat your land a little bit right give right. it a little help yep so this is a good networking opportunity for them to all get together and you know things are different from property to property and state to state so you know having having everybody local here is it's just a great opportunity for them gatlin bunton is going to be um the one that's doing the workshop, um, it looks like it's $30 per person, $50 for a farm couple. And you can call, and I, I'm i assuming these are numbers to reach yeah, Gatlin, Ra Ra maybe? Rachel's the other one. And she's Rachel. Gonna be, she's going to be helping out. Yep. Okay. And so, those are their numbers. Yes, so it's 573-438-2671. Or 573-775-2135. And you can also register online at extension.missouri.edu forward slash events. Right. And, and then just find that event and easy to do. follow the links and it'll get you there for your registration. So that's Friday. And that's so you need that's to really Friday. get on that one pretty quick. Now there's another one next Monday and Tuesday, isn't there? Another, yes, there another is. Another get together. Um, the University of Missouri Extension's Woodland Steward Program is going to be hosting um, a workshop with a twilight tour demonstrating woodland management practices according to the University of Missouri Extension Natural Resources Specialist, Sarah Havens. And if you have not met Sarah Havens, she is amazing. She has, <laughs> she is just, she's just so cool. She's full of so, so much information. We were talking right. about Word Act while ago and um, we did a little retreat out there and I got to tour the facility. That was the first time I had been there. 
and she did a demonstration um, on inoculating logs with shiitake mushrooms. Mm -hmm. I had never done anything <laughs> like that. It was hands-on, so we all got to do that, so it was really cool. So she is, she is amazing, um, and it's going to be a virtual session on woodland management tools um, through Zoom Monday evening, the 27th from 7 to 9 p.m., and then the following evening on the 28th, they're going to be meeting in person from mm -hmm. 6 to 8.30 at WERDAC Extension and Education Center in Cook Station. You'll get a tour um, of the recent examples of forest management practices. It's a $25 fee, and that includes a light meal prior to the tour. Uh, Missouri has 15 million acres of privately owned forest land, and management on the private acres is just as important as on public lands as good forest management on private lands benefits the wildlife and forest health in the state. You bet. So that's just kind of goes back to what we were just talking about mm -hmm. a few minutes ago with the farm. Um, but you can, for the workshop, this is a long, kind of a long one, M-U-E-X-T dot U-S forward slash Woodland Workshop 2022. Trust me, if you go into the extension website and just type in Woodland, it'll get you. It'll get you there. Yep. Uh, and also look at all the other events. Oh, oh there's, there's a up. bunch. There's, there's a, there's and these are just the them. local ones. And right. there's a whole bevy of in-person type of uh, classes and things going on right now from heifer management all the way down to grasses and different right. things of that nature even eradication Gardening. of weeds yeah some pretty good stuff out there and as you mentioned this one is kind of a hybrid it's right. a zoom and an in-person one so right. um a little bit uh different and don't normally see hybrid mm -hmm. ones either it's one or the other but right. not this one this is pretty yeah. cool so that'll be next monday and tuesday mm -hmm. and you still got plenty of time to get that signed up for that one and again Sarah does a great job. She, yes, she explains does. stuff, and uh, I, you'll really love the tour. Trust me. And, mm -hmm. and but she's very, very intelligent young lady, and but she's knowledgeable. And and when it comes to the timbers, right. I'll tell you what. And and uh, I think, and Amy, and don't quote me on this, but you know I know a lot of people around here. Obviously, we, we have a lot of woods, um, mm -hmm. but they don't realize how much money there actually is. Maybe even on their own property with the back forty, they Absolutely. don't really go back there because it's all these woods. Mm -hmm. Well, there are always a lot of money back there. It's a great asset for your property. You might need to look at that. You need and the extension can help you oh, yeah. with that oh, as yeah. well. Yep, and Sarah and I believe it was Gatlin too. Um, last year when we first moved up here, we moved from, from Florida, um, but they did a workshop on food plots mm -hmm. um, and an amazing job, things we had never thought of before and didn't know. I mean, we didn't have, I mean, people do food plots in Florida, but we personally didn't have any. So this it's is not a, a Missouri food plot, though. Well, even gardening, <laughs> even yeah. gardening is different. Sure. Um, we were out working in our garden last night, and I'm like, goodness gracious, you can't just pull these weeds out of the ground no. like we did in Florida because we had a lot of sand, sand. in Florida. Sand, yeah, a lot of sand. So base. here yep. it's like concrete, so it's a whole new learning experience. So should have yes, done that extension. back when it was wet, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Of course, they weren't there then. They, were, were they? they weren't there then. No. So well, they were. They were just little itty seeds. Yep. So we're she, it, it's a whole new learning experience and it's amazing the different classes and workshops that you can get from extension so yeah go to that website look at their events you can see some of the past ones and more than likely there's one schedule for the future as well because like sure. they do try and keep them going and nutrition gardening yep. you know anything you can think of and if you're into gardening, uh, last night they had to cancel their uh, Weed Warriors, as a matter of fact. Right. That was their, their class was going to be uh, uh, scheduled last night over mm -hmm. at the Salem Community Garden. A little bit warm last night. It was right. pretty hot yesterday. Yes, it was. And so they canceled that, but they're going to reschedule that. But if, if you're interested in a plot out there at the Salem Community Garden or the workshops that they mm -hmm. have, and they're free. They're, they're open to anybody. You don't have to have a plot out at the community garden mm -hmm. to go and learn about how to do the different things that they're showing you. The master gardeners are out there to instruct mm -hmm. you on the different ways of gardening that there might be. Some people have uh, hybrid systems that they put together that are self-watering. Mm -hmm. It's amazing some of the things that you find out. I, I saw this gentleman had a rainwater waterer. 
and he, he captured rainwater in his barrel, and then it, he had a timer on the barrel that it would release water to his plants. Yeah. And it was just so cool. And you're thinking, you know, well, I remember Grandma and Grandpa had a cistern that all the rainwater went to the cistern, mm -hmm. okay? Well, I'm thinking, wouldn't it have been cool back then instead of us having to get down there and cool that thing <laughs> You know, which is scarier and all big oh, yeah. get out oh, yeah. uh, to get in. But nonetheless, you know, here it is. It just, it's automatic. Yeah. And it had a pump on it, and it would just slightly spray. It was timed. I don't know how long it was, maybe mm -hmm. 10, 12 minutes, and then it would shut off. And you didn't use all your rainwater. You weren't transporting it. You're not wasting mm -hmm. it. Right. It's all in a nice little tube that goes right in the ground, mm -hmm. right along the plants. That is all on timer. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he, it was amazing. I sat there. I thought, well, that is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, using a little bit of today's technology and a little bit of yesterday's common sense. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, you think about it. When you're watering your garden, what needs the water, the plant or the roots? So using those micro jets yeah. um, in your garden, the water just goes right down to the root system and just a few minutes here and there, off and on throughout the day. So, exactly. Yeah, so when you cool. spray, you know, you get the hose out and you spray your garden and you're wasting all of that air and you watch it on a day like yesterday, you'll watch half of that evaporate, evaporate. within yep. seconds. Yes. Hitting that ground, just zoop, gone. Yep. You know, so yeah. It's, there's some pretty interesting things out there, and you can learn a lot from the master gardeners, not only about maybe some new innovative ways of trying to keep your plants watered, mm -hmm. but some maybe new ways of growing them. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, gosh, I, I attended one of these, and this gentleman had a plastic container, and he cut an angle. It kind of looked like a chair, you know? Mm -hmm. And I thought, what in the heck is that? And he said, he goes, this this is a great way to capture water because water never comes basically straight down. It usually comes on an angle. But we miss most of it because when it comes on an angle, if you're straight up and down, you only get part of it. <clears throat> so he goes, if you know which way the rain's going to come from the southwest or northeast, you turn this around and you get double the amount of water. And it drains. I think... That's Seriously? That's Seriously? <laughs> you know, Why didn't I think of that? Yeah, I mean, if it's coming out of southwest, turn it toward Just the southwest. It. If it's coming cool. out of the east, turn it toward east. <clears throat> and the angle it is, it's got a, you know, got the big cup here, but the opening faces right where the water's coming from. Well, it makes sense. It makes perfect sense. You know, and then he had a little tube that went out, and he, you know, yeah. I wish I'd have thought of that yeah. myself. Yeah. You know, patented and made trillions of dollars. <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe not that, but you know, but just some things that can help you because right now we're short on rain. We yes, weren't short we on rain three weeks ago, no, but we, we are not. now, and it doesn't look like there's really any rain in the forecast for the mm -hmm. next week. So yeah. anyway, but take advantage of these things. The extension, if, and if you still want to plot out the community <clears throat> garden, by the way, you can still get one. You can call Sarah Massengale at mm -hmm. the extension office, or you can contact Charlie Grimm or any of them gang mm -hmm. out there when they have the meetings or out there Saturday mornings. Go on out and check it out for yourself and then ask how you can do the plot because it doesn't cost you anything. It's yeah. free. Especially if you're new to it because yeah. they're right there to help you yep. answer any questions. So, yeah, take advantage of it. Absolutely. Great opportunity. All right. Very good. All right. Well, we've got a couple other things coming up. We already kind of have given people a little <clears throat> tease about what's coming up in July. And it's going to be here before you know it. I keep feeling like the the expo gets closer and closer and closer to July 4th. I know. You know, I it just know. seems like it's right on top of July 4th this year, and I don't know why. It really isn't, but it feels yeah. like it is. Yeah. You know, years ago, Amy, before you came in, we used to have this the fall festival in August. I have heard about that. And it was it. actually during school. <clears throat> yeah. And it was crazy. But school started a little bit earlier back then, too. Right. You know, it's like the second week of August. Well, then they got moved back to the first week. And then they wanted to get it away from the state fair. Mm -hmm. So then they moved up a little bit earlier. And now we're moving up in the day part. So there have been some changes made to it. But yeah. one of the nice things about it is it's still a great effort by our kids yes. to understand how hard it is to raise animals and then to try and profit from yes. that. Yes, yes. And before we talk about the expo, um, one of the things that they um, participated in was the jackpot show. Mm -hmm. That used to kind of be, you know, if you're a first-year exhibitor, you had to go to the jackpot show, and they had it out at the Commons. Last year, I believe, was the first year they moved it to Texas County. Right, used to. Um, the fairgrounds there. So we couldn't really require our 4-H and FFA 
first time exhibitors to go because it's in a different county. Sure. And we know, you know, not everybody can get there. <clears throat> but I, I helped them out this year and they always have a Dent, Texas County portion of the show. And our Dent County kids, and if I have any 4 H people or FFA people out there listening, um, we do have a Facebook page for Dent County. 4-H. Mm-hmm. Um, we do, we've got four clubs here in Dent County and I try to encourage the parents whenever their kids and it, and I, and I don't mean to, I don't want to say, unless your kids are showing, don't send me pictures. Um, <laughs> because 4-H is much more than that. But right. The, the bulk of the pictures and information that I get are from families that are going to different shows and, and showing their livestock. Um, so if there's any 4-H parents out there listening, please, if your kids are involved in anything, whether it's gardening at home, helping out in a nursing home or, or whatever, please send me pictures because I love to let the community know what our Dent County kids are doing. Mm -hmm. Um, I, am one of those that keep them busy. It keeps them out of trouble. Because you always hear about the ones in trouble, don't you? You always hear about Mm -hmm. the ones in trouble. Um, and not about the ones that are out there learning new things and teaching other kids the things that they have learned. Um, I've seen some pictures, and if you look at our Facebook page, um, I've shared some of those pictures where there's a group of five or six kids that are clipping an animal, getting it ready for show, and, and one of the moms made a comment on one of the pictures that they never say a word. They are focused on what they're doing, but... You know, the, the, no what just warms <laughs> my heart is they're helping each other. Right. I mean, they could be looking at it. I'm not going to help you because you're showing against me. And But they don't have that attitude. They're there to help and teach and learn yep. themselves. And I think that is just amazing whenever we see things like that. So I like showcasing that. I like letting the community know what our kids are up to. Um, so Send me pictures, give me details, and I will post them on our Facebook page because that's that's what 4-H and FFA is all about is getting the kids out in the community and and helping other kids learn from them. So I, I always say that, uh, you know, obviously we just kind of mentioned it, that the kids that get in trouble get all the headlines. <laughs> it's unfortunate that that is the case when really when right. they get in trouble, nobody should even know about them. But right. it should be the other way around. The kids that do the, the great stuff are invisible. They, mm-hmm. they never see them because they blend right in. They don't stand out. And because they don't stand out, uh, they're not getting the attention. Now, right. a lot of these kids don't want the attention. They just want to do what they want to do. Mm-hmm. So if I want to raise my animal, if I want to build my fence or I want to do that, leave me alone. Let me go do it. But right. they're not asking for glory. They're not asking to have their picture taken. They're not asking for any of this. But if you happen to come across these young kids doing a lot of great work, take a shot of that on your Absolutely. phone and then send it in. It, there's no you know, uh, there's no harm in, in doing that when you show somebody doing the right things, right. The, the good work that, you know, we all we all grew up doing. Everybody mm-hmm. had you had chores. You had chores. Mm-hmm. I had chores. They had to be done every day. Absolutely. You didn't get them done that day. Sometimes Dad said, "Well, you didn't you didn't do your chores." And I said, "Well, I'm sorry, Dad." He goes, "Sorry, doesn't cut it. You don't eat." Mm-hmm. Uh, all of a sudden, that gets your attention. Mm-hmm. You're hungry. Mm-hmm. You don't get to eat. Uh, and my mom would ever usually sneak you something later, but <laughs> but his his word was if you don't do what you're supposed to do around the house, you don't get it, you don't eat. All right. Now that it's it's a quick lesson to learn. Usually within one time you remember if I don't do my chores, I don't eat. Doesn't take a lot of repetition to That's it. Right. Okay. That's right. But but the easy thing is we start talking about gardening, we start talking about things. You're growing your own food. If you don't get out there and weed it, don't take care of it. There's your food source. It's right. gone right. for your animals. If you don't get out there and take care of them, brush them, maintain them, make sure they're water, make sure they're healthy. That's your food source. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's gone. These kids are learning such a valuable lesson uh, with doing the different things that they do. It's amazing to me. I never, when I grew up as a city boy, so I never had a chance to do this. 4-H in the city was basically a little get-together club, and they did business stuff. Right. There was none of this agricultural stuff. There was none of the thing about growing anything. There was nothing about archery. No, none of that. Yeah. It was crazy. Then I come down here and I'm seeing all the different things. Our 
clubs do down here. I'm thinking, <laughs> no wonder why kids want to be a part of this. This is cool stuff. It's very cool. But it, especially it, nowadays, right? With the but way the world is. We back in be... the '60s, that wasn't the case in the city. The 4-H's were, and then there was 4-H clubs, mm -hmm. but they just didn't have much to do besides. These little, I'll just kind of say like sub little business meetings. And that's all they really did. I, yeah. And it wasn't that it was bad. I mean, I went to a couple of them. But it wasn't, there wasn't anything fun. Right. What I mean, do you think no, to do? Yeah, nothing fun about this. Yeah. I do this every day. I was, I was helping my mom with payroll back when I was little. I was like, this is just like work. Yeah. You know, this <laughs> isn't fun. So the neat thing is, is that we have some great 4-H'ers. We have 4-H'ers who are also FFA members. What a wide spectrum of knowledge that these people get from the different things that they're presented to through their 4-H clubs. Right. Great opportunities. And, you know, they don't. They don't realize um, everything that they're learning from that experience and where that can lead them. Um, when I was an ag teacher in Florida, one of the contests that we did was the meat judging contest. Mm -hmm. And you had to be able to identify the different cuts of meats and um, grade your carcass and all that kind of stuff. And I asked one of the kids one time, I said, so why do you think we do this contest? And he said, so when we go to the grocery store, I know a good cut from a bad cut. Not that they would sell bad cuts, but a, a better cut. And I said, okay, what about beyond that? And I just got it. I mean, he was thinking. He was really trying to figure it out. But he said, I don't know. And I said, well, go way back. Where does that meat that you're looking at in the grocery store come from? Mm -hmm. And then where does it come from before it gets to that point and where does it come from before it gets to that point i said so you're starting out a little farmer down the road and then going to a feed lot and they finish them out mm -hmm. and then the slaughterhouse and then these companies these grocery stores have buyers and they go to the slaughterhouse or the packing house right. and they 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 know how to look at that carcass and determine that's what I want my customers to have. Mm -hmm. So I said, it, you know, there's jobs from all the way back at the farm all the way up to the grocery store. There's somebody involved. So he's like, I never even thought about that. And then you have said, the vets that have to take care of the Absolutely, the vets you know? that have to take care and of them. And it's so important. Yep. And, and um, you know, what I, I really appreciate about these kids, you know, and, and of course we get a chance <laughs> to see them at the expo in person doing what they do with their animals but they there's a joy to this and i know some people say well it's hot out there how do those kids do it and they're proud of that animal oh, there's yes, a joy are. to what they have done this is an accomplishment that they have done mm -hmm. you know you can tell some of them that where mom and dad have probably helped them out quite a bit there's not that same level but boy you got about 80 percent 90 percent of these kids that have done this on their own by mm -hmm. themselves mm -hmm. And boy, you can tell it. And, and if and if they've been doing it right, yeah, you can tell that mm -hmm. they've put the time in it. It's not just a matter of going out there every day and slinging some feed and some hay to them. Right. There is a lot more to it than that. And you know, I I I have seen cases, and I'm sure you have too. You've been to many expos and shows where it's obvious the kid is not the one that worked right. with the animal. Right. Um, because if the kid's been working with the animal, that animal knows, knows their them. touch, their voice. You know, they the vibe that's coming right. from them. Um, so, yeah, these kids put in a lot of time. Um, one of the things I noticed right off the bat is, I mean, you, you can tell it because when you are walking with your pig and there's not a fence in sight, um, there were a couple of them last year that whenever they got there to check in at Expo wow. and the line was kind of long to unload the trailers, they just opened the trailer and, well, I can walk my pig up there quicker just, than just, sitting in this line. That's right next so to it. So they're going through the yeah. parking lot walking their, walking their yeah. pig, yeah. and if they had not spent the time with that animal, they would not be able to do that. It would be like a rodeo out in the parking lot with the pigs. Pigs gone wild. Sure, absolutely, <laughs> so yeah. you can definitely tell the And the that can get very dangerous when yes, pigs go can. wild. They're, yes, they're, it can. Uh, yes, it they can. They can get up ahead of steam pretty quick, and then they take you off your feet. It's yep. going to hurt. Yep. 
Yes, it will. Yeah, no doubt about that. So, we, But we want to salute our, our 4-H kids. Uh, now, a lot of the camps for 4-H that uh, normally are held in June, that's all done, obviously. Um, well, actually. For the most part. For the actually, most part. Actually, this is the, and, and this was my first um overnight camp last year we did a day camp okay um at camp clover point yeah. and i think that was only Ozarks. allowed last year was day that camps, was that right? was all that was allowed um and sarah havens was there for the natural resources <laughs> por- portion of it this year we were back in person so this was my first overnight 4-h camp and it was amazing i i have to say though that i went the first week um, this year they did it three weeks And I think normally in the past when they were having in-person overnight camps, um, different counties went different weeks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This year they did it a little bit different. There were three weeks they could sign up for, and they just picked a week. So the first week we had some kids from Dent County, and the second week we had kids from Dent County. This is the third week, and this will be the last week of of camp for this year. So I went the first week, and it was, I mean, the weather was amazing. I'm kind of glad I wasn't there the <laughs> second, allowed, third this, week. Especially last it, week. It was, it was brutal. hot. Yes, it was. Um, but it was it was great. Um, we had a small group the first week, a much larger group the second and third week. So they are wrapping up summer camp. Um, I guess tomorrow will be it. That'll be it. Yeah. Uh, that'll be it. And then we're already making plans for next year's camp. So it was exciting. It was good to see the kids. And, you know, the coolest thing, and I wish every summer camp would do this and every conference would do this, but when the kids check in, guess what they leave? Their, Their cell phone. phones. Oh, yeah. Their cell phones. And you know what? Everybody survived. Everybody what? survived. Yes, they I know. The it's unbelievable. And I, you know, I never heard anybody complaining. You know, I sure do wish I had my phone and nothing. They were focused on what they were there for and having a good time. And so it was, it was, it was really nice. We had, we had one night, we had a storm come through. Um, it was in the wee hours of the morning. A storm came through. It woke me up. Get your attention. Um, <laughs> yes, it did. And the next morning, we didn't have power until oh, That about, gets your attention, that too. That got my attention, too, because that meant no coffee. Um, what? I know. Somebody has a campfire, don't they? Somebody, yeah. So um, I think we were having lunch, and the power came on. So everybody was glad we had power and I immediately jumped up and got the coffee pot going. Yeah. I said, it is past time for some coffee. But it was a good time. It was a good time. So we are um, going to be having a meeting probably in the next month or so to, to review that to review yeah. this year and <clears throat> tweak what we need to and start making plans for next year. Which which brings to light, we want to make sure that the kids do an opportunity. If they want to go to camp, then these camps are available. And uh, make sure that you get – with Amy, and then they, as soon as they're announced, you can actually get them uh, right. the information they need. I may not be able to sign up for it yet, but right. you know, at least you'll have an idea what the dates are. And usually, I think sign up start like two months ahead of time or mm-hmm. before that. Um, but there's some, you're some amazing camps now. COVID killed a lot of those camps for a short period of time. I'm hoping they come back. They had space camps and different things that were out there. I'm sure when COVID hit, a lot of those, I know all of them, basically just got shut down. Right. And it's going to take a while to get them all back. But uh, if you're interested in some kind of camp, it's a great way to go. And as Amy mentioned, you take the phone away, you find out there's a whole new world out there. Absolutely. And, you know, one of my my biggest things I try and tell people that I said, you know, I didn't grow up with a cell phone. And, but I always was curious what was over that hill mm-hmm. or curious about what's down that road. Because I'll do the same thing today. Somebody, I said, where's that, you know, I wonder where that road goes. Well, I don't know. And I said, well, you want, let's go find out. Well, why? Just because. Yeah. <laughs> you never know what's around the corner. You That's might right. find the most beautiful house in the world, most unusual tree. Mm-hmm. But you're never going to do it if you don't go there. Right. You know, so, but I, I, f- I feel like sometimes the youth today says, well, I can look at it on my phone. Guys, that's not the same thing as walking up to that tree that might be 160 feet in the air and touching it. Right. Or feeling the breeze underneath and hearing the leaves rustle. Or whatever it might mm-hmm. be that you get underneath that and you realize that 
This is a work of nature that you can't duplicate on a That's phone. Right. That's right. Guys, you need to be out there. These these uh, workshops we talk about, you can't duplicate any of that on a phone. You can Zoom all you want to, but until you get out there and get those hands-on demonstrations, just like you talked about with the mushrooms, you can't do that by phone. You can watch somebody do it. That doesn't mean you know what it's going to, the texture of it. Right. You know, people don't understand a lot of times. They'll watch a recipe on, on, a, on a phone or TV show, which is okay. I get it. You know, you don't know how to do it, so you're going to watch the recipe. But as they're stirring it and as you're doing things, I worked in a kitchen for years. Texture, smell, those things are so key and in, of ingredients to what you're making mm -hmm. that without them, you can watch all you want. And somebody's going to taste it, and they're going to just give you that look in the face that you know that, Obviously, that wasn't very good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I was trying to keep it clean right there because usually they spit it out. And, but you can always tell by the texture. So when somebody's helping you to learn, mm -hmm. if they say that batter needs to be smooth and creamy, smooth and creamy to me might be something different than it does to you. In and a it restaurant. Can, it can look smooth and, and creamy it can look on smooth. a camera. You betcha. And it's not. It's, it's still not. got lumps yeah. or it's got this or it's too thick. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you and you you need to be able to get some help. Okay, if it's too thick, how do I thin it out? Sometimes it's just water. Sometimes you end up finding people put a little vegetable oil. Right. Some people put lard in there. And they're like, wow, we can not put lard. That's just <laughs> nothing but fat. We've been cooking with lard for a long, a long time. <laughs> time, people. And actually, lard's one of the cleanest things to cook with mm -hmm. because it's a natural source. Right. You know, even vegetable oil has to be processed, mm -hmm. but not lard. It's just cut it right off, and That's there right. it is. That's right. You know, so, you know, one of the interesting things is, is that there are these learning opportunities for these youngsters away from their phone, and they absorb it. Mm -hmm. It's it's like a big sponge in their head. They've taken a you know taken a visual thing away from it that's on a little small picture screen, and now it here's this whole big picture, true big picture of what's out there. Right. One and of the one just, of the sessions that they had they had arts and crafts, natural resources. Um, they did their swimming, um, but one of the the things that I really enjoyed because I've never done it before. They had the tri-county electric companies mm -hmm. so we had inter-county electric there boone county electric and i'm okay. sorry i can't remember it seemed like there there were there were three of them there's crawford like, county there's yeah, there, yeah there's, i can't remember the, the other yeah. one but um all of the kids had the opportunity to make their own extension cord oh yeah i've never done anything like that before so i'm like and and we all got probably a four or five foot extension cord we put it together ourselves, and they tested it to make sure we had and everything connected right and it yeah. worked and then we all got our extension cord to bring home with us and well, that's pretty like cool. you were just saying we could sit there and watch that on tv or on a youtube video or whatever but actually the hands-on part of it i mean it made me want to just go to Lowe's and buy everything I need or Home Depot or Robert's <laughs> it, Judson or whatever and buy everything I need so I can make some more. But exactly. But it's not just the extension cord because you had to put two ends on that extension cord right. and you have to wire them correctly. Right. So you have to know what the positive, the negative, the ground is. Yep. And when you put that together you say, okay, now I know what that is. And on the other side, I know where that goes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's amazing. You know, what you learn when you do something like that, you learn more than just one thing. Okay, go cut the cord at four feet, four inches, and you're going to trim off this, you trim off this, and end up being four feet because you got connectors on each end. Right. It's amazing what you learn and how you do it and how you learn how to, to pull that wire back, open it up, and then to, mm -hmm. to put it in, tighten it up. And, and not only uh, that, but now you, you have know, something if, useful. If you have an extension cord at home that's getting a little frayed, yep. you know, at the ends. Now you know how to fix it. And you won't go throw it away. And you won't go throw it away. Right. So, so that was kind of But cool. those, are, those are all great real-life uh, studies. Yes. And, and, Amy, that's just that's what I was talking about with our 4-H kids. They, they get a chance to do this with the shooting skills and things of that nature. It's just amazing yeah. how many things that we offer. 
And one of the nice things that we have done here in Dane County for years is open that up to people who have a special skill. If you have mm-hmm. a special skill that you would love to teach kids, you know, I remember a guy down in West Plains was making violins. Mm-hmm. Now, I, he didn't, I don't think he came up to Dent County, but he got as far as Texas County. He was going there for their 4 H program and teaching them how to make a violin. Oh, my goodness. I, I, I can't even imagine yeah. how you make a violin, but he did yeah. from scratch, from, you know, putting the wood together, getting the tone of that, how to treat the wood, doing all the why there's the curves, why there's the holes, why it's mm-hmm. cut out, sanding it down. By hand. That's awesome. And then stringing it and putting because the kids bunch. need to know, but and and adults too. I'm sure. one of those. If if you give me a task, okay, what what's our outcome? What are we working toward? Tell me why I'm doing this, and mm-hmm. then I'll understand how to do it better. And that's the same way with kids. If they know all the ins and outs of a project that they're working on, besides just how to do it, why right. am I doing it? Like you said, what is this hole for? Why does it have the curves? Then it makes more sense to them. And just the fact that it's hands-on. I mean, kids need that. I had a lot of kids when I taught ag. I mean, I could sit there and tell you how to read a seed packet and how to pick that seed up and how to, you know, figure out how deep the hole needs to be. But until they actually have that seed in their hand and and they're actually getting that row ready, it doesn't click. Right. So they need to, to hear it and then do it. To be able to for it to stick, so it, it, re, the and re, then repetition makes yes. it easy. Then you never forget, right? You know, right. but I, I was amazed at this gentleman, and I had I had met him in West Plains, and really nice man, and uh, I did not realize he made some of these for the West Plains band. Wow! And so you know they were down there, and because these kids couldn't afford violin, so he made it. Okay. Wow. But you, you look at the That's finished talent. product, it's beautiful. And then you start out with these pieces of wood that don't look like anything mm-hmm. and some glue. You know, like, uh, well, what's that going to be? Well, that's going to be a violin. Yeah, okay, sure. You know, <laughs> no, don't think so. But it's amazing what people can do. Yeah. And these are becoming lost arts. Yes. They're, they're just not there. So if you have a talent, and it doesn't have to be making violins, it can be anything out there. We've had basket weavers. We've mm-hmm. had different people that do different things uh, that they learned a long time ago. Brick making. Yeah, I, That's mm-hmm. one of the neat things I learned about brick making one time. Totally by accident. Totally by accident. The right type of mud. And what, why the mud had to come from a certain place in the Mississippi River. It's the only place it could come because it's the only one that's set up that was kiln proof. You could go to like 4,000 degrees and that brick just sat there. Well, I think we have some soil in our garden <laughs> that they could use for bricks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because right now it's a brick, right? Right now it's yeah. a brick. <laughs> but it was a, but it, you know, these, but I watched the guy actually go and he take, he take his, I'll say template for bricks and he'd go to this one place in the Mississippi, but he had to do it when it was wet. And you have to get it, not, not when it's underwater, but when it's kind of starting to try and dry out. And then you have to shovel it, and you have to put it in there and level it off. And mm-hmm. then he have to, you have to add, he just added a little bit of uh, kind of like, a, like a, a powder to it that would just, just keep it all, all solidified together. And I really don't remember what that powder was, but it, was, it wasn't cement. Yeah. <laughs> so I said cement, mud and cement don't mix. Um but it was all it did. Just it kept it together, and then once you you put it in a kiln and baked it, that brick was ne- it was like concrete. Yeah. And you wondered how that's how people used to do things years ago. They didn't have yeah. concrete. Yeah. Well, they made it with their own bricks. Mm-hmm. You know. And then I remembered going up to the Alton Brick Factory and uh, near St. Louis, and they basically it's right there on the river. You want to know why? They used some of that same mud in their yeah. bricks. Wow. And so it was amazing that you see people could do their own. Now, you're not going to mass produce them like that, obviously, but, you know, you watch how it's done. And it's just, it's pretty amazing like said, that you could do art. your own. Yes. yes. Very interesting things. Yes. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get to the Den County 4-H FFA Expo because right. it is not a one-day event. It's not just the auction. Uh, this, this event starts uh, over at the Commons on mm-hmm. the 13th, correct? Well, actually, Our on the 12th, 12th you start to bring stuff right, in. Right. The 12th is when the exhibits start coming in right. that the kids have showcased. And um, this year, 
Um, in the past, it's always been 4-H exhibits, but the FFA kids work on things throughout the year also. Mm -hmm. So this year, we're going to have the 4-H and FFA exhibits oh, that's cool. um, in there. So that will start on Tuesday, July 12th. And then on Wednesday, July 13th, all of those exhibits will be judged. Right, We've got that, that morning, right? That morning. Okay. Um, and then that afternoon is when the desserts start coming in for the dessert <laughs> auction. <laughs> favorite time oh my goodness <laughs> last year was amazing so those um the dessert entries and that can be anybody anybody can bring a dessert in um, as long as it's there by five o'clock um, we'll put your name and everything on it and then our dessert auction starts at six o'clock and that it that's all that we have going on on Wednesday, the exhibit judging and then getting ready for the dessert and that's on the youth building in the commons at the commons uh-huh Inside. Inside, <laughs> yes. And it's a packed house yeah, come gets auction crowded. time. It, it's really cool. And then on Thursday is when the livestock comes in, and we have our registration. Our weigh-ins start at 1230. And I'm kind of excited. We have a new show that we're doing this year that will also take place on Thursday. Um, it's going to be a small show, okay. but we're calling it The Pig Pals. The Pig Pals. The Pig Pals. Um, I've communicated with the schools <laughs> here in Dent County, and we have a lot of kids that are special needs. Mm -hmm. And so I w and they may never have the opportunity to do something like this. So we're inviting some of those kids to our expo. We're going to partner them with a 4-H or an FFA exhibitor that mm -hmm. is showing a pig obviously <laughs> and they are going to have the opportunity to go in the the arena um so we've got our our guest exhibitor with a 4-h or ffa member and their hog will be in the arena together cool. um, they'll get a little time to practice and then we're going to have a show for them they'll be in there showing that hog um, with their 4-h or ffa exhibitor right there with them um, just an opportunity to, for them to, to have the chance to go in and work with an animal sure. and, and get it to move around. The, it's just a little fun, a little fun class for them. Um, no, but that that's something they'll remember. Yes, it will. I think we all will. Yeah. I think yeah. we'll all remember it. So that'll take place on Thursday, and then we have our exhibitor and family supper Thursday night starting at 6 o'clock. So a full day on Thursday um, with our weigh-ins and the pig pals show that we're going to have uh we we might not have five or six kids out there but i i think it's a great opportunity for and then you might have 15 that, or 20 and then we might have 15 or 20 yeah. yeah so and that's something that i hope grows next year um I, I kind of dropped the ball on that in contact in the schools it was really close to the end of school um but i've got a friend of mine that is helping me get in touch with some of these kids so that good. we can have some out there. So that's oh, going to be fun. Okay. And then on Friday, starting at 7 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> the fun begins the show with our hog begin, show yeah. and then our sheep and goat show. Um, and then we have the rabbits and the poultry. And then our beef and dairy show um, should start around 2 o'clock Friday. And then Saturday's sale day. Sale day. And the sale starts at what time? 9 o'clock in the morning. So a lot, uh, a lot earlier than that one o'clock start we used yes, to have, and yes. a lot cooler. <laughs> yes, I think it was in 2020 when it, with COVID, they, um, I think they had a breakfast or something in the morning before the mm -hmm. before the sale, um, but they did away with that and started the sale at nine o'clock, and we've just kind of kept that going. It's it's a little bit cooler in the morning, so we just kept that going. It's hard to get a breakfast going because everybody's trying to get up and going. Right. You know, right. And, and years ago, they used to actually have a pedal tractor race that morning. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, I think ago. all of that, all of yeah. the little activities that the, the kids are going to be right. involved in, um, our, FF, our Salem FFA chapter and the four... Um, 4 H clubs mm -hmm. have activities planned for sure. th Thursday and Friday evening for the kids that'll be staying out there right. or the kids that want to stay for a little while and then go home. Yeah. But they've got a bunch of activities that they're going to be yeah, doing. Yeah, they used with to do that at 10 o'clock in the morning. And then at noon, you had your lunch. And yeah. then at one, you had your show. And it was yeah. pretty warm. Yes. At times. And yeah. so, uh, anyway, 9 o'clock in the morning on the uh, 16th, right? The 16th, yes. Okay. 
So very good. And then, of course, we'll be there bringing it, and we'll be broadcasting it live, and we're going to video stream that live as well for those right. that cannot attend yes. uh, or maybe cannot put be out in that heat. And it, it could be a hot day. It we just never know. Uh, even in the morning, it can be very hot right. and because it's uh, it's July. Yes, it is July. <laughs> That's all you have to say. It's <laughs> July. It's going to be warm. So, and we invite everybody out there. And you don't have to just go to the auction. You can go out there and visit with the kids yep. once they it's bring their animals man. in Thursday. And then they'll be with them the rest of the time until after the auction. And then uh, it'll all break down. And you'll be amazed how fast it breaks down Oh yeah! Uh, right after the show. So we invite everybody out there to check things out. But while you're there, you can always cool off inside the youth building and check out those exhibits. Yep. Kids put a lot of time into those yes, exhibits. They, do. they really do. And so, and you're going to find some amazing exhibits. Mm -hmm. There are just things that these kids get some creative ideas and somehow are able to put them together. Yes. <laughs> I don't know how to do it, to be honest with you. Sometimes, I, first off, I don't know where they got the idea. Yeah. So their imagination is just going crazy. And then be able to try and not only take that visually inside their head and then make it into something physical that you can touch right really is amazing yep so some of these We've kids got some talented kids we yeah. had some cake decorating last year that oh my goodness they were beautiful so lots of talent yeah and and leave it to our uh, salem Mary arts council mm -hmm. teaching cake decorating and a lot of these kids are learning that with their moms yep. uh, and dads too, not just moms, but they're going up there and they're learning how to decorate cupcakes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they learn how to do this from people who are really creative. And so then they go back and then they start putting their own spin to mm -hmm. this. Yep. So it really must, makes it kind of fun. So anyway, yeah, you want to check out all those exhibits and the exhibits will be available after the judging, mm -hmm. like about one o'clock in the afternoon Probably, on yeah. Wednesday. It's usually yeah. about when they're done. Yeah. And then you can actually go in. They'll have their ribbons yep. right there. So we've got some, um, we have trophy sponsors. And we have about 63, 64 trophies um, that we give out during the expo. Mm -hmm. So we're we're seeking out sponsorship. And so we do have some spots still available Still for available. Um, what else do we have? The record book sponsorship. Um, we brought back. The record books last year because when COVID hit, yeah. I'm beginning to really hate that word. Yeah, one me of too. The, one of these years we won't be speaking of it again. But when COVID hit, um, they really kind of did away with turning in the record books. Well, we brought that back last year, and we had some sponsors help us out, and we were able to reward those kids that are Do a putting great the job. work yeah. in their record books. I know record books are awful. They are not fun. <laughs> I, I know that. Um, but they're just as important. They're very important. Well, yeah, they're you huge. Know, it's, it's a good skill to have, um, especially if you're going to be doing something like this, taking over the family farm and that kind of stuff. You've got to be able to keep your records so that you can make good business decisions. Absolutely. So we had some sponsors help us out, and we were able to um, break the kids into three different age groups and then um, first, second, and I believe third place um, got a little got a little change to take home with them. First place, I think, was a little over a hundred dollars that they were able to take. I keep take records back with them. Yeah. <laughs> Can I turn I do mine now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so sure um, got a lot better now. Yeah, yeah, much better. Just waiting on somebody to ask if they yeah. can look at my record book. Yeah. Um, so well, you don't want to ever write that off to the IRS. Yeah. <laughs> no. You <don't> <laughs> Yeah. So our look at my record books? <laughs> so oh, our trophy yeah. sponsorships are thirty dollars per per spot per trophy. Mm -hmm. um, the record book sponsorship is just whatever you would like to give. So okay. um, very good. We we're still looking for record book sponsors. We also have some spots available for vendors. Uh, we've got some really cool vendors so far. We've got um, some fr the freshies that will be out there for your car or your house if you want to hang them up in your house. Okay. Um, we've got some um, home decor that will be there. We've got, some, and I can't remember the name of the business. It just left me. But they do a lot of the wood cutouts, and they're going to have the the shapes of the ear tags and the animals that can be, oh. have, have some, some, um, like the tag numbers of the kids' right. animals and stuff as a little keepsake. So, oh, and of course the food. 
the food will be there. Yeah. Um, so lots of vendors. So if we have some out there that are listening that have a, a um, food truck food, or a vendor, food truck tent, or a vendor yeah. that they would like to set up out at Expo, it doesn't cost you a thing. Um, just uh, But you do like them to contact you, let oh, you know yes, they're going to yes. be there. We have an application to fill out yeah. um, just so we have your information so that yeah. we can get everybody Let's just placed. Show up and, with your tent. <laughs> yeah. Don't just show up yeah. with your tent. We need Please to know don't. you're going to be there. <clears throat> so Please you can call me at the office and I can get that to you. We, we also have a Facebook page just for the expo. Um, I think it's just Dent County 4-H FFA Expo. Um, and the vendor applications, the record book sponsorship is not on there. The trophy sponsorship is not on there uh, um, because in order for us to hold your spot, we need your money. So for those two, you'd have to come in the office. But wow. for the vendor applica application, that's on there, and you can just fill it out and send it to send me. Send it and in. I'll save you a spot. On the office, second floor of the Judicial Building. Come yes. on by, and if you need to fill out that form for a trophy sponsor, mm -hmm. uh, that takes you all of three minutes. Right. Yeah, it's not very hard. But bring your checkbook. Bring $30, your checkbook. right? $30 for trophy sponsor. And there's a maximum of five that you can do this year. It's, mm -hmm. That's kind of new. But, yes. you know, maximum of five. So if you want to sponsor five different trophy you can. Right. I'm not sure how many you have left. There probably aren't too many There's left. not too many. Yeah. Not too many. So if you want to do that. And you don't really get your choice of which trophies you do. No, what just, we do You just do is, that. And they kind of throw them in a hat, don't you? Well, kind of. I yeah. have a, a little program on my computer. It's a spinner program. Okay. So well, same I've way. got all of the names of the trophies put in there. So... I I go down my list whenever you know I start at the top and <laughs> I hit that spinner and whatever it lands on sponsorship number one gets that one uh, and I just go down the list. I, so I was thinking you had that thing spin and you hit it with your finger and it stops right here and <laughs> that one and you lift it and put it right there. Next one, do the same thing. Yep. You know, have some fun with it, right? Yep, that's right. No doubt about it. But if you are planning on being a trophy sponsor, the sooner the better. Yes. Because they really like to be able to get all that uh, taken care of or even record book sponsor. Yes. Please get that taken care of. I would definitely say before the 1st of July, the yes. latest. Uh, we want to try and get all that together because this is starting on the 13th, actually on the 12th. Yes. You know, but uh, so it's not going to be much time after no. Independence Day, like a week, yep. to try and put that all together. That's why I said that's it when feels it gets crazy. like we're, this is nuts. Yeah. You know? That's when it gets crazy. Yeah. Very good. So. All right. So that's a, that's a big item coming up. But yes. we also have the Missouri State Fair coming up that our extension always supports as well. Yes. Yes, the Missouri <clears throat> State Fair is August 11th through the 21st in Sedalia. Am I saying that right? Sedalia. Sedalia, mm -hmm. okay. Um, and they have lots of, lots, of, and I have yet to be there. So I think this may be the year that I need to go to State Fair because <laughs> I, I haven't checked out the Missouri State it's Fair. It's interesting. But it looks like there's lots of uh, stuff going on. Trace Atkins will be there, Sam Hunt. Mm hmm. Um, some of these I've never heard of before. <laughs> yeah, right. you'll you'll get that too. So yeah, yeah. But they're, Stony they're... Larue and Charlie Crockett never yeah. I've never heard of them before. But lots of bands, lots of activities for the kids. Um, they have a lots of food. Yeah, lots of food. That's always the highlight lots of any of state food. fair. Is yeah. all the food. We don't we don't eat all day, and then we you, just you can't just, when you yeah, walk in. It's just miserable. It's aroma. Yes. Aroma. Things aroma. you've never heard of before, but you have to try it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> even things you have heard of before, but they'll have a spin to it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. It's some. So, yeah, they've got all their games. livestock shows. Um, barnyard story time. All kinds of contests and exhibits. So, something for everybody. Bull yeah. riding, tractor shows, a little bit of everything. So, oh, I'm looking sorry. forward to that. I'm excited to go there this so year. So, head on out there. And pamphlets are available for that. You can also go online at mostafair.com. Mm -hmm. And you get the whole breakdown of everything. And you can uh, pick and choose what you want to do or find yep. the right days that you want to go. And there's always usually a lot of good entertainment. They used to have stock car races out there as well. I mean, there used to be a lot of different things going on. And once COVID hit, you never know if they're coming back. You right. know, that's always the right. thing. And so uh, always interesting to see well, what our state looks fair. looks at this pamphlet, I don't know that they could fit anything else in, but I'm sure Yeah, they, it was, I'm well, sure I mean, in one year, the pamphlet spot. was like a single sheet. Yeah. yeah it was nothing, you know. And they, we have you know. some of these pamphlets in our, in our office. So when you come in to pay for your sponsorship, 
you can pick, pick one up. up. There right. you go. All right. right. Very good. Well, Amy, I want to thank you for coming in. Do you have anything else that you need to pass uh, on? Or are you pretty well caught oh, up? One this, more thing. Uh, the Neighborhood Leadership Academy. Uh, okay. Um, this is. So it's held every year. It's held every year. Okay. And I participated in this the first year when we moved here. Um, just so I could get an idea of what the community has and what I could get involved in. Um, it looks like... Boy, you sure like didn't know what you are going to get. <laughs> <laughs> had no idea. No idea. Um, it looks like it starts in September. It's Monday evenings from 6 to 9. Um, and if they're doing it like they did whenever I took it, it's, it's like a Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it's an online course, but... To have there are tons person, of extension people. Don't they have some in-person ones? That, like every five meetings they have an in-person get-together? I don't know if they do get together. They, I, I, they might. I know they, they used to do that, but yeah. then when COVID hit, that, that all ended. Yeah. So it starts September 12th, and it runs through November 14th. There are scholarships available to help with the cost. Um, I think when I took it and I applied for the scholarship, it was all paid for. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's a great opportunity to, to get with community members and toss around idea, another networking opportunity. Right. Um, this one focused on the community. And really helped you get more acquainted as to this area. Yes, it did. You had no idea. Yes, it did. Florida and Denton County. I don't see a lot of the same stuff. No. Humidity, maybe. <laughs> well, <coughs> this past yeah. week, yeah. I have to admit, it felt like Florida humidity, so... Yeah, I felt like I was back in Florida with the weather. So it's time for it to go. <laughs> it's time. For yeah, I, I have a feeling you're not going to like it again. Probably yeah. today or Friday or Saturday. Yeah. It's and then it'll get cold, way. and I'll yeah. say, okay, it's yeah. time yeah. for it to go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, never go happy, away. We? No, we never well, happy. you know, it, it's, uh, it, it is amazing when people talk about humid levels. Yeah, Florida, it's always humid. It's always you know. humid. And then they have all of a sudden they have these pop up showers and then it'll go away. It'll mm -hmm. cool off for a little bit. And then pff, here it is right here again. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't take very long in Missouri. Sometimes the same way. Yeah. You get that shower and you think, oh man, that shower's coming. It's going to cool it off. Then the sun comes out and it's three times warmer yes. than it was because now there's moisture and it's just right. sucking it right up. Yeah. So yeah, we're very good about that. So a lot of different things going on uh, with 4-H and FFA. Uh, the other expos going on, 4-H clubs, obviously still going strong. A lot of different things still going on in your 4-H clubs. Uh, October 1st is the renewal day, right? Enrollment. Okay, yes, for enrollment. So if anybody has any questions about 4-H, if they have any questions about the 4-H and FFA Expo, if you want to be a vendor or anything like that, uh, or if you want to just come and be a sponsor, uh, we're still looking for record book sponsors as sure. well as the trophy sponsors. Feel free to get in touch with Amy mm -hmm. at the office, 7293196. Right. And the office is on the second floor of the Judicial Building. Now, if you can't trek up those skinny little steps to get up there. <laughs> Every it, day it, it, I say, it, I hate these stairs. I bet you do. <laughs> It's a great workout, though. Yeah, it really is. But yeah, whatever. It's, <laughs> it's yeah, it. But it it definitely is a climb. And if you can't make that climb, just just call just up there, call. and they'll they'll come down and talk to Absolutely. you and bring you what you need. And if you've never been up there, there's a lot of different information up there that you can pick up. That's it's all free from the extension. Right. Or if you need some information about insects that are in your home that you have no idea what they are if you can capture one you can take it there and they can send it off and tell you what it is i mean i actually had one of those in my house i had no idea what this thing was never seen it before and then when they sent it back it said not normal in this area oh and i well how did it get here and yeah. how did it get in my house yeah. you know anyway well you never then, know well then you find out you had these storms come through and all this wind they get up in a tree, and all of a sudden they get blown in the wind, and the next thing you know, they're 35, 40, 50 miles or 100 miles from where it's supposed to be. All right. They're here. Yep. Yeah, you find it. So anyway, thank God it was dead yeah. <laughs> when I found it, but it was multicolored, and it, it kind of looked like something out of a science fiction thing. Oh, my thing. goodness. I, what the heck is that thing? Yeah. actually comes yeah, from Texas. I think Texas. I have to find out. It actually comes from Texas. It's big old. Ew. Thing, yeah, it wasn't like it was an itty bitty little thing. It was a big old thing. <laughs> it's then sitting in my dining area. Oh, 
what are you doing in and here? And where had it been? I mean, and how to get how in did there? It get in, yeah. Yeah, what what did it come in on? So yeah. you just never know. So, but if you do find something like that, they can take care of that for you. We talk about soil tests. We talk about that hay test. These are all available through your friends at the extension. You yeah. can find out more. We get calls about pond issues yeah, and grasses and so gardening and. Lots right. of information. And Eric is there for if, your agricultural and, needs. So and if we don't know the answer there in the office, we can definitely hook you up with somebody that will be able to help you. Extension is a great network that extends yes, lot, far beyond Dent County. There's a lot of great people. Gatlin Bundle, we talk about mm -hmm. that. Uh, you know, got Rachel, and she does a great job, too. So, you know, all the different people involved. You got a lot of great support staff. So if you have a need, 729-3196 or stop on by. That's 112 East 5th Street. Did you know yes. that? <laughs> okay, I figured yes. you did. So I got off the top of my head. Very good. I'm impressed. Uh, yeah, up there at the Judicial Building. And, of course, uh, if you have any questions or can't make that climb, 729-3196. Yes. And you can go online, by the way. If you mm -hmm. type in Den County Extension, it'll take you right there in Google or Bing or whatever else you might use. Right. Oh, there's so many different ones. <laughs> Just take your choice. But it will find you. And then you can go through. And you can actually, uh, we talked about a couple of workshops here. Mm -hmm. Amy, we already mentioned, there are many other workshops as well in different regions. And they will actually separate out by region. You can yes. actually go to central region, mm -hmm. north, uh, east, northwest, I think south central, southeast, and southwest. I think there's, mm -hmm. is there six east or seven? Central. I think St. Louis and Kansas City might be in there as well. So you get the different regions, and you can find out about some of those workshops. Might be on gardening, might be on grasses, might be on agriculture, might be on who knows. Mm -hmm. Uh, but some of those are pretty interesting, and you can sign up for them. Some are free. Some have a small cost to them. Right. Check them out at the uh, Extension website. It's mm -hmm. a pretty interesting place to go. As always, thank you for your time. Thank Hope you, you have a fantastic day and a great Independence Day holiday because you know after that it's going to be nothing but work. It's going to be crazy. For the next Good crazy. 10 days yes. after that. No yes. doubt about that. Amy, again, thank you for your time. We really thank appreciate you. you coming in. That's Amy Glenn, our Dent County uh, 4-H mm -hmm. advisor. Is it advisor or Youth is it coordinator? Youth Program Associate. Youth Program YPA. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a new one on me. Yeah. <laughs> I'll test you on that next uh, time. Youth Program. <laughs> yeah, you might need to because I'm probably going to forget. No <laughs> doubt about that. Well, we thank Amy. And uh, if you have anything... Uh, and by the way, uh, we, uh, we are very sincere about that. If you have a special skill you would like to teach Absolutely. the 4-H'ers out there that you think that might be interesting, and may, maybe you're saying nobody would be interested in that, call Amy and surprised. find out how many people might be interested right. in that. Right, right. Even if it's not something associated with one of the 4-H projects, mm -hmm. you know, just to be able to go into one of the club meetings and do a demonstration and, and you know, just teach something new to the kids. It's amazing. It's yep. amazing some of the talents that are out there that people can do. Right. That they all think that nobody be interested in what I can do. Yep. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Yep. Give me a you call. Really would be. Thank you very much, Amy. Thank you, Stan. All right. Keep it right here. We have civic happenings coming up shortly.